Hello everyone, this is DJ from GarageFront.net Academy and in this short tutorial I will be showing you how to make curtains in Blender. Just like these ones, or even better. This is DJ Pi, the new DJ bot for GarageFront.net Academy. If you want your personal Blender assistant inside Blender, just like this one is here, you just have to download Blender DJ bot Adam from GitHub. Nah, just kidding. To make our curtains, we'll just start from scratch. So let's start with a fresh file. So we have the default cube, and let's delete this and add just a plane. Let's increase the size of it. This will serve uh, as our floor. And let's uh, duplicate this, rotate this on the y axis, for example. 90 degrees, maybe scale it a little bit down so that it's smaller and let's move it just so that it almost touches the surface of the floor. This will be our curtain. Uh, right now it's just a plain piece of 3D fabric um, to make it be less stiff. Let's subdivide it in the edit mode. So I think we can subdivide at least 10 times or even once more. We, now we, let's give it a basic shape of a you know a wavy type of fabric, just like the curtain, like you would imagine a simplified curtain. And later on we'll make it a realistically as a, as a cloth with the cloth seam. But first. Let's, maybe now, uh, at this level, let's quickly unwrap it. Well, I'm unwrapping it right now because later on, after all the curtain simulation and you, and you apply this, uh, you, it might be unwrapping a little bit deformed. Right now it's just a square face, so this is going to unwrap it just uh, perfectly. Later on, when you'll add some tex textures to the fabric, you'll have just a perfectly textured piece of cloth correctly unwrapped. And now, let's add a wave modifier. And as you can see, it gives a little cool blob to our surface. We increase the speed maybe to 5. See that the wave, or maybe let's make it 15. You can see the wave is spreading from the center of the object to the sides, but we don't really want this to be a uh, kind of ripple. And if we decrease the width of a uh, wave, the width of the wave is really the distance. It's in Blender, you need to see the distance be between the high highest points of, of the wave. So uh, from this point here to this one, uh, right now it's 1.5. Let's make it a little bit smaller value, like Point four, perhaps. See the ripples are more dense, and we want this to be just uh, deforming in one direction. So let's make it like this. Uh, it has the arches here. We want this wave to be like a sinusoid, something like this. Let's make the height also point four, just the same. And now let's uh, take care for the narrowness of the wave this is causing right now uh, the uneven geometry of the wave so if it's it's correlated with the width of the wave we make it four we'll have a decent wave that we're looking for and we can apply this if we apply this we have a nice wavy mesh now let's go to the side view in the orthography view and go to ed to the edit mode. Deselect all. Make sure that we are in transparent mode. Yep. Now, if we box select, and let's change it to face select. Deselect this raw here. Now I have just a set of faces selected, just this way. And I want these to be holes in our curtain that the rod will pierce through. Now let's just 
I converted group for these ones and let's call it pins. And I'll assign these and delete only faces. Also scale it in the z-axis a little bit. Let's select the group here in the vertex groups. And this way we can select the delete vertices here. And also what I'll need for the cluster simulation is another group of vertices uh, which will be the upper stripe. Turn to vertices, select and select some more. So I need this stripe here. So this is the part of the fabric that's usually sewn together a few layers connecting the curtain to the rail. This part of the fabric is going to be stiffer so we'll need another group call it stiff and assign the uh, vertices selected to the group. So now we have two groups and if we select this one the holes selected and if we select the stiff we'll select all this stripe. And now I want these to be circles so I'll go to the user preferences and enable a pre-installed add-on loop tools. So I have it already enabled but if you don't Check this little mark here and save user settings because loop tools is a really uh, very useful add-on you'll use a lot. And now let's go on creating the circles. So let's select our pins, select them, and right now it's just four vertices. So that's not not, not enough geometry to really form anything closer to a circle. This much vertices, but we'll subdivide smooth. So that's uh, more like it. Right now in edit mode we can see that we have a panel loop tools in the tools tab down below and we have a few cool options and the option that we'll use for this one is circle. Also you can play, uh, click this little button here to have some options and there's be best fit and fit inside so difference is like this best fit and this is fit inside the fit inside just fits a uh, circle created inside the, the area that was taken by the vertices and best fit was a little bit more adaptable so we'll go with best fit and I also uh, change our mode pivot point to individual origins and now extrude this and scale a little bit down so that I have a ring around each hole just like you would in uh, the curtain so this will be probably some, some kind of metal metal wooden ring so let's add a curve a curve base yeah let's turn it in the edit mode to a vector and rotate it Let's add it a little bit of bevel, change it to full, have a round rod. As you can see uh, the holes are not perfectly aligned, so we need to align the holes with the rod using proportional editing. Okay, so now we have uh, the basic shape of our curtain. It's looking pretty fun, but if we want to give this a realistic cloth uh, behavior, we have to use the Blender physics. So let's go to the physics tab and let's add uh, a cloth to this one. And let's add a collision to the floor. Well, we won't be needing this much frames for our uh, for our simulation, so let's make it 100. It's pretty much enough, and uh, let's also go to cloth cache and set up the same length of the simulation. Let's maybe save the file, and now we can play with the simulations. Well, let's first use our vertex groups first for pinning. So cloth right now. Let's set it to maybe denim so that it's a 
bit a little bit of uh, more stiff thicker uh, fabric for a heavy curtain and let's set up pinning group and use the pins so if we go to vertex groups and select the pins see that this will be just this one but mm, I don't really like this I want the, the pins to be just this circle so let's control I inverse the selection and remove every other vertex from this group so right now if we check selecting this group only these ones will be selected so the pins will be uh, set to stiffness of one that means that they will not move at all during the simulation and it's okay we'll later on adapt this a little bit to the rod so that it's hanging on the rod but, but for the sake of the simulation it's just fine let's bake this simulation it's baking okay so it's baked and if we play the animation we have a moving cloth and I think the floor should be a little bit closer to the fabric so that it forms a bit more. And generally, I think the mesh is not dense enough so that we can't see any wrinkles and stuff. So let's maybe do this once more. Let's pause it. Subdivide this move once more. Let's go to the frame one and reopen bakes of the simulation. So that we can bake it once more and place the floor a little bit closer to the mesh but not intersecting with the mesh because this might cause some artifacts in the simulation so just keep close but not touching let's bake it once more you can make yourself a coffee while it bakes or if you have a super fast computer it will bake in just a few minutes Right now when we have a little bit denser mesh, it will surely be a little bit longer. It's so now it's baked, and let's play the animation to see the effect. Yeah, that's pretty much better. There are nice wrinkles here, but the fabric meets the ground. And if you want, you can pick just any frame for your visualization that looks best for you. But if you take a closer look, uh, right now it's um, sometimes the mesh is intersecting itself. That's happening because we didn't set up the self-collision in the cloth collision panel here. So let's free the bake and let's enable the self-collision. Let's also enable the cloth stiffness scaling. And in this panel, we can uh, set, up, set the structural or, structural or bending stiffness. We'll, we'll go with, with the structural, and let's select the stiff group, and that is the whole stripe of vertices here. So right now, this this part will behave a little bit different than the rest of the cloth. It will be stiffer. Something more that I wanted to show you is using thing called shape keys, and Right now we can add a shape key of basis, so that's the base the shape key for our model. And let's add another shape key. So key one will be scaled like this. Just on the y-axis so that we pull the curtain together. Maybe put it a little bit to the side so that it's not symmetric. We were editing this with the second key selected, so the basis is just this one. And we have the second shape key that has a value, a slider, so it deforms the mesh according to this value. Now, to make this affect our simulation, we have to keyframe this. So we're going to the first frame of the simulation, and let's uh, hover the mouse over this value and press I. Right now, the, key, uh, the shape key is keyframed for this frame with the value of zero. And let's go to the final, or maybe to the 60th frame. And it's turned green because this uh, is not keyframed. 
on this frame. Let's switch it to 1 and press I again. And right now, when we go through the animation, see the mesh is changing, like taking uh, the shape key into account. So uh, the cloth calculation will take uh, this movement into account when simulating the deformation of the cloth, like the, the curtain was really pulled together during the simulation. So let's right now go and bake our simulation once more. Animation baked and let's run it. It's looking pretty nice. Floor. Even just like a real cloth. Let's pause it and find the frame that you like and just uh, apply this so if you want to apply you cannot apply to a mesh with shape keys so that's why we have to remove the shape keys first to apply the formation to our mesh and to do that you have to just just delete the shape keys That's it for this tutorial and I hope you liked it and found it useful. If anything is unclear to you, uh, just ask in the comments, I will try to help. And subscribe if you want to get notified of the new content coming out. If you have any suggestions on what you want covered in our tutorials, let us know in the comments below. So see you in the next tutorials and keep planning!